Chapter 11 Then saw I a dream, and behold, there came up from the sea an eagle, which had twelve feathered wings and three heads. And I saw, and behold, she spread her wings over all the earth, and all the winds of the air blew on her, and gathered together. And I beheld, and out of her feathers there grew other contrary feathers, and they became little feathers and small. But her heads were at rest. The head in the midst was greater than the other, yet rested it with the residue. Moreover I beheld, and lo, the eagle flew with her feathers, and reigned upon earth, and over them that dwelt therein. And I saw that all things under heaven were subject unto her, and no man spake against her, no, not one creature upon earth. And I beheld, and lo, the eagle rose upon her talons, and spake to her feathers, saying, Watch not all at once, sleep every one in his own place, and watch by course, but let the heads be preserved for last. And I beheld, and lo, the voice went not out of her heads, but from the midst of her body. And I numbered her contrary feathers, and behold, there were eight of them. And I looked, and behold, on the right side there arose one feather, and reigned over all the earth. And so it was that when it rained, the end of it came, and the place thereof appeared no more. So the next following stood up and reigned, and had a great time. And it happened that when it rained, the end of it came also, like as the first, so that it appeared no more. Then came there a voice unto it, and said, Hear thou that hast borne rule over the earth so long. This I say unto thee, before thou beginnest to appear no more, there shall none after thee attain unto thy time, neither unto the half thereof. Then arose the third, and reigned as the other before, and appeared no more also. So it went with all the residue, one after another, as that every one reigned and then appeared no more. Then I beheld, and lo, in process of time, the feathers that followed stood up upon the right side, that they might rule also. And some of them ruled, but within a while they appeared no more. For some of them were set up, but ruled not. After this I looked, and behold, the twelve feathers appeared no more, nor the two little feathers. And there was no more upon the eagle's body, but three heads that rested, and six little wings. Then I saw also that two little feathers divided themselves from the six, and remained under the head that was upon the right side, for the four continued in their place. And I beheld, and lo, the feathers that were under the wing thought to set up themselves, and to have the rule. And I beheld, and lo, there was one set up, but shortly it appeared no more, and the second was sooner away than the first. And I beheld, and lo, the two that remained thought also in themselves to reign. And when they so thought, behold, there awaked one of the heads that were at rest, namely, it that was in the midst, for that was greater than the two other heads. And then I saw that the two other heads were joined with it, and behold, the head was turned with them that were with it, and did eat up the two feathers under the wing that would have reigned. But this head put the whole earth in fear, and bare rule in it over all those that dwelt upon the earth with much oppression. And it had the governance of the world more than all the wings that had been. And after this I beheld, and lo, the head that was in the midst suddenly appeared no more, like as the wings. But there remained the two heads, which also in like sort ruled upon the earth, and over those that dwelt therein. And I beheld, and lo, the head upon the right side devoured that that was upon the left side. Then I heard a voice, which said unto me, Look before thee, and consider the thing that thou seest. And I beheld, and lo, as it were a roaring lion chased out of the wood. And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle, and said, Hear thou, I will talk with thee, and the highest shall say unto thee, 
Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts on whom I made to reign in the world, that the end of their times might come through them? And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were past, and had power over the world with great fearfulness, and over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression, and so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. For the earth hast thou not judged with truth, for thou hast afflicted the meek. Thou hast hurt the peaceable, thou hast loved liars, and destroyed the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit, and hast cast down the walls of such as did thee no harm. Therefore is thy wrongful dealing come up unto the highest, and thy pride unto the mighty. The highest also hath looked upon the proud times, and behold, they are ended, and his abominations are fulfilled, and therefore appear no more, thou eagle, nor thy horrible wings, nor thy wicked feathers, nor thy malicious heads, nor thy hurtful claws, nor all thy vain body that all the earth may be refreshed and may return, being de delivered from thy violence, and that she may hope for the judgment and mercy of him that made her. Chapter 12 And it came to pass, whilst the lion spake these words unto the eagle, I saw, and behold, the head that remained, and the four wings appeared no more. And the two went unto it, and set themselves up to reign, and their kingdom was small and full of uproar. And I saw, and behold, they appeared no more, and the whole body of the eagle was burnt, so that the earth was in great fear. Then I awaked out of the trouble and trance of my mind, and from great fear, and said unto my spirit, Lo, this hast thou done unto me, in that thou searchest out the ways of the highest. Lo, yet am I weary in my mind, and very weak in my spirit, and little strength is there in me. For the great fear wherewith I was affrighted this night. Therefore will I now beseech the highest, that he will comfort me unto the end. And I said, Lord, that bearest rule, if I have found grace before thy sight, and if I am justified with thee before many others, and if my prayer indeed be come up before thy face, comfort me then, and show me, thy servant, the interpretation and plain difference of this fearful vision that thou mayest perfectly comfort my soul. For thou hast judged me worthy to show me the last times. And he said unto me, This is the interpretation of the vision. The eagle whom thou sawest come up from the sea is the kingdom which was seen in the vision of thy brother Daniel. But it was not expounded unto him. Therefore, now I declare it unto thee. Behold, the days will come that there shall rise up a kingdom upon earth, and it shall be feared above all the kingdoms that were before it. In the same shall tw twelve kings reign, one after another, whereof the second shall begin to reign, and shall have more time than any of the twelve. And this do the twelve w wings signify that thou sawest. As for the voice which thou heardest speak, and that thou sawest not to go out from the heads, but from the midst of the body thereof, this is the interpretation, that after the time of that kingdom there shall arise great strivings, and it shall stand in peril of falling. Nevertheless, it shall not then fall, but shall be restored again to his beginning. And whereas thou sawest the eight small under feathers sticking to her wings, this is the interpretation that in him there shall arise eight kings, whose time shall be but small, and their years swift. And two of them shall perish, the middle time approaching. Four shall be kept until their end begin to approach, but two shall be kept unto the end. And whereas thou sawest three heads resting, this is the interpretation. In his last days shall the most High, raise up three kingdoms, and renew many things therein, and they shall have the dominion of the earth, and of those that dwell therein with much oppression, above all those that were before them. Therefore are they called the heads of the eagle. For these are they that shall accomplish his wickedness, and that shall finish his last end. And whereas thou sawest that the great head appeared no more, it signifieth that one of them shall die upon his bed, and yet with pain. 
For the two that remain shall be slain with the sword. For the sword of the one shall devour the other, but at the last shall he fall through the sword himself. And whereas thou sawest two feathers under the wings, passing over the head that is on the right side, it signifieth that these are they whom the highest hath kept unto the, their end. This is the small kingdom, and full of trouble, as thou sawest. And the lion, whom thou sawest rising up out of the wood, and roaring, and speaking to the eagle, and rebuking her for her unrighteousness, with all the words which thou hast heard, this is the anointed, which the highest hath kept for them, and for their wickedness unto the end. He shall reprove them, and, he, and shall upbraid them with their cruelty. For he shall set them before him alive in judgment, and he shall rebuke them, and correct them. For the rest of my people shall he deliver with mercy those that have been preserved upon my borders, and he shall make them joyful until the coming of the day of judgment, whereof I have spoken unto thee from the beginning. This is the dream that thou sawest, and these are the interpretations. Thou only hast been meet to know this secret of the highest. Therefore write all these things that thou hast seen in a book, and hide them, and teach them to the wise of the people, whose heart thou knowest may comprehend and keep these secrets. But wait thou here thyself yet seven days more, that it may be showed thee whatsoever it pleaseth the highest to declare unto thee. And with that he went his way, and it came to pass when all the people saw that the seven days were past, and I not come again into the city, they gathered them to all together from the least unto the greatest, and came unto me and said, What have we offended thee, and what evil have we done unto thee, that thou forsakest us, and sitteth here in this place? For of all the prophets thou only art left us, as a cluster of the vintage, and as a candle in the dark place, and as a haven or ship preserved for the tempest. Are not the evils which are come to us sufficient? If thou shalt forsake us, how much better had it been for us, if we also had been burned in the midst of Zion? For we are not better than they that died there. And they wept with a loud voice. Then answered I them, and said, Be of good comfort, O Israel, and be not heavy, thou house of Jacob. For the highest hath you in rem remembrance, and the mighty hath not forgotten you in temptation. As for me, I have not forsaken you, neither am I departed from you. But am come into this place to pray for the desolation of Zion, and that I may seek mercy for the lowest state of your sanctuary. And now go your way, go home every man, and after these days will I come unto you. So the people went their way into the city like as I commanded them. But I remained still in the field seven days, as the angel commanded me, and did eat only those days of the flowers of the field, and had my meat of the herbs. Chapter 13 And it came to pass, after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And, lo, there arose a wind from the sea, that it moved with all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and, lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men, out of number, from the four winds of the heaven, to, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain, and flew up upon it. But I would have seen the region or place whereout the hill was graven, and could not. And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude he that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. 
Afterward I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, some of them were bound, and others some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and awaked, and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Show me now yet the interpretation of this dream. For as I conceive in my understanding, Woe unto them that shall be left in those days! and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. For they that were not left were in heaviness. Now understand I the things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. Therefore are they come into great perils and many necessities, like as these dreams declare. Yet is it easier for them that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and not to see the things that happen in the last days. And he answered unto me, and said, The interpretation of the vision shall I show thee, and I will open unto thee the thing that thou hast required. Whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the peril in that time hath kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works, and faith towards the Almighty. Know this, therefore, that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. This is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same is he whom God the Highest hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came up to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. And the times shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as thou sawest then, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and builded, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall lay before them their evil thoughts, and their torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor, by the law, which is like unto fire. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom Salmanasar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen, and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow passages of the river. For the Most High then showed signs for them, and held still the flood, till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great way to go, namely, of a year and a half. And the same region is called Arsareth. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now, when they shall begin to come, the highest shall stay the springs of the stream again, that they may go through. Therefore sawest thou the multitude with peace." But those that be left behind of thy people are they that are found within my borders. 
Now when he destroyeth the multitude of the nations that are gathered together, he shall defend his people that remain. And then shall he show them great wonders. Then said I, O Lord, that bearest rule, show me this. Wherefore have I seen the man coming up from the midst of the sea? And he said unto me, Like as thou canst neither seek out nor know the things that are in the deep of the sea, even so can no man upon the earth see my son, or those that be with him, but in the daytime. This is the interpretation of the dream which thou sawest, and whereby thou only art here lightened. For thou hast forsaken thine own way, and applied thy diligence unto my law, and sought it. Thy life hast thou ordained in wisdom, and hast called understanding thy mother. And therefore have I showed thee the treasures of the highest. After other three days I will speak other things unto thee, and declare unto thee mighty and wondrous things. Then I went forth into the field, giving praise and thanks greatly unto the Most High, because of his wonders which he did in time and because he governeth the same, and such things as fall in their seasons, and there sat I three days.